Hey, real quick, one of the best ways you can support me is by enrolling in one of my courses. I have everything from a beginner level introduction to hacking methodology to a course for red teamers and pen testers doing phishing and social engineering engagements. All of my content comes from my day-to-day -day work as a pen tester and red teamer in the field, and I also offer a lifetime refund guarantee. If you enroll my course now, and let's say three years from now, you realize it wasn't worth it, send me a message. I will refund whatever you paid for the content. That's how much I believe that these courses will help you in your career. They're all incredibly affordable. Links are in the description. Enjoy the rest of this video. If you are getting into the field as an ethical hacker, you're likely spending a lot of time on platforms like Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. And one of the things you may have noticed is almost every single machine that you dive into, you end up getting stuck. Then you go to Google, you type in the machine name and walkthrough, and there's hundreds of walkthroughs guiding you through the machine. And the question you may be wondering is, should I use walkthroughs? Or when should I use walkthroughs? And when will I no longer need walkthroughs? So in this video, let's talk all about that. But first, let me just answer this question. The primary goal of doing any type of machine or lab online isn't to solve it on your own, which I know sounds confusing, but the primary goal is that you need to learn something in the process. So every single time you go into a machine, whether it's try hack me or hack the box, there's a few things I recommend. Number one, make sure you're taking notes on every single command you run on your thought process. And as you solve the machine. If you ever take a hands-on certification like the OSCP, the PMPT, the PT1, the CPTS, I'm sure I'm missing some other alphabet uh, letters in there, but when you take a hands-on certification, you have access to your notes. When I took the OSCP, for example, I was able to pass it on my first attempt, primarily because every machine I did, when prepping for the OSCP, I took very detailed notes. And when I got to the exam, and let's say I saw that FTP was open, I could go to my notes, do control F, find port 21, and see, hey, all the machines I solved ahead of time when FTP was open, what are some attacks I tried on it? Number two, when you are going through the machine, there is some wisdom in the whole try harder mentality, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at a walkthrough. I still look at walkthroughs all of the time. And I do pen testing for my day job. Like I legit get paid to hack stuff for a living. And yet I still get stuck even on easy machines on hack the box much of the time. It's really because CTFs and pen testing are quite a bit different. I'll make a video on that eventually, but looking at walkthroughs does not mean you lost. And the goal isn't even to solve a machine without looking at a walkthrough. Instead, what I recommend doing is when you're working through a machine, you are going to get stuck. And when you get stuck, set a timer for yourself. Maybe give yourself an hour and for that hour, fall down rabbit holes, do some troubleshooting, do some Googling, do some GPT, do we have everything you can to try to figure out what the answer is going to be. And it's even helpful to step away from your computer for a little bit, especially on an exam when you can't look at a walkthrough, but I'm sure we've all had this experience when we're completely stuck on a technical challenge. We step away for 10 minutes or we go to bed for the day. We wake up the next day and we were missing something super obvious. So take a break and set a timer for yourself. At the end of that timer, if you're still stuck, you can look at a walkthrough. You haven't lost, you haven't failed, but when you look at the walkthrough, only look far enough until you're no longer stuck and then dive back into the machine and keep working through it on your own. You will get stuck again and then rinse and repeat Set a timer, take a break, look back at it again. Then if you're still stuck, look at the walkthrough until you are no longer stuck. But even more importantly, when you solve the machine with using a walkthrough or without using a walkthrough, make sure you document, 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 document that missing piece of knowledge that you did not have. The act of writing it down is going to help cement it in your memory and you'll have it in your second brain, namely your notes. So to answer the question, should you look at walkthroughs when going through a try hack me or hack the box machine? My answer is absolutely you should. The goal is not to solve a machine on your own. The goal is that every machine that you solve, you should learn something in the process. And I would argue if you never get stuck, you're probably not learning anything. You need to up the difficulty of those machines. But I would love to hear from you. How do you approach using walkthroughs when you're working through a CTF like machine? 
Do you follow the approach I just shared with you? Do you really just struggle hard to try to solve it? I would truly love to hear your thoughts. So whether you're watching this live right now, which those of you watching after the fact, I'm recording this while I'm live streaming, or if you're watching this after the fact on my YouTube channel, let me know. Believe it or not, I really do do my best to read all of the comments on YouTube for good or for bad, and I would love to hear from you. So let me know in the comment section, and we will continue the conversation there.